Welcome to the second chapter of the Digital Music Workshop. In this chapter I want to talk about electronic music protocols and inter-application and device communication. It sounds like a lot, but what it actually means is um, that I want to show and talk about ways of how to connect programmatically to other applications and how, how other applications can talk back to, um, to the programs that we, that we are writing. There are a lot of different ways to achieve this and protocols and methods and <laughs> all sorts of interfaces. Um, but I just want to um, highlight uh, two, three um, quite common ways um, common in the music world, basically. So the first one is MIDI. Um, that's a very old um, protocol and, and way of doing this. OSC is a network-based um, method. Um, it's a bit newer. Um, then I also want to try um, it's always a bit shaky and flaky to reroute internal audio signals um, to, um, to use them in a, in a digital signal processing context. And then I also want to uh, interface uh, with, with other yeah, applications as well. So um, let's look at, have a quick look at MIDI first. So MIDI is uh, this thing from the logo you can already tell. It is um, old. <laughs> I think it's got a, a very nice, well, late 80s, early 90s um, feel to it. And I think that's, that might also been kind of the time uh, in which it was actually invented. Um, so MIDI is actually an abbreviation, um, acronym for Musical Instrument Digital Interface. And it is, um, it might be worth noting that it's actually um, multiple things. It's a communication protocol. Um, um, that is um, uh, actually uh, implemented in its original form on top of a serial communication protocol. Um, it's also a digital interface, but it is also um, like an electrical description of electrical um, or definition of electrical connectors. And you might have seen um, these rather, where is it, rather iconic um, um, plugs here, those, those uh, five pin Dean plugs. Um, they are also oops, part in the part of the MIDI um, um, definition um, and uh, are also still quite used quite widely these days. Um, yeah, there's also of obviously of course a Wikipedia page on MIDI um, and definitely worth um, reading up on up up on because um, MIDI as I said, also, it's also a protocol, so there's a lot of commands and a lot of um, tables to look at to, to, to also understand better um, what these numbers that are sent around by the meter protocol, what they actually mean. So, um, so it's always worth um, looking at those uh, descriptions, definitions, and they're uh, linked on Wikipedia for sure. So it's a good starting point if you want to um, learn more about MIDI. Um, what might also be worth noting is that MIDI is very much um, evolved around this idea of, of, a, of a keyboard, which are like the one I just showed, so like a, like a piano keyboard kind of um, thing, black and white keys, and, and also the, the, the way in which this is used. So um, pressing a key, releasing a key, um, this is, that, that's a very, sounds a bit simple and basic but that's a very fundamental concept in MIDI and um, a lot of the decisions that are made in the MIDI protocol really come from this notion of okay let's try to uh, create a protocol for for um, something like a piano keyboard. Um, there are um, basically two major message types in MIDI so um, the one the main main thing you do in MIDI is send around notes um, so um, when is a note when a note is triggered? It's called the note on event, and when the note is um, the note is released or the, the finger is lifted from the key, um, it's called the note off event. And um, and usually these note events they are comprised of three values. Um, the the most important one basically is the the pitch, so the the um, which key was actually pressed, and then the second one. Um, is the actual volume of the key, how, how loud the note is supposed to be played. And then um, the third one in this, in this, um, on this slide, it's the first value, the channel. 
um, that actually defines the, the, the channel because MIDI is also supposed to be able to play more than one instrument or to control more than one instrument. So um, <clears throat> that can also be um, um, chosen by, um, by the channel value. So pressing a key creates a note on event, releasing the key creates a note off event. And um, just as a little reference to the first chapter of this workshop, um, I was talking about envelopes and the ADSR envelope, which is also um, designed around the notion of pressing a keyboard, piano keyboard key. And, um, and if you think back to this, um, then this note on event is the, the first three stages of the ADSR and then the, the note off event is the last stage of the ADSR envelope. One other thing that's really worth noting, especially when you start programming um, and programmatically generating MIDI messages or receiving MIDI messages, um, the MIDI message definition um, for the note events is um, um, described as, as a, has a value range of um, 0 to 127, so it's a 7-bit um, value range. That's really worth noting. And you can already tell that this is quite a low resolution. So this is absolutely fine for pressing discrete keys because that would, um, you could um, describe like 128 keys, which would be quite a big keyboard, um, quite a big piano keyboard. I'm not sure what the, what, the, what the default number of keys is. I think something around 100 on a, on a piano keyboard. Um, although that might be already a very big one. Anyway, it's more than 10 octaves, and I think that, that covers quite a lot. So, um, so it's probably pretty much the, the audible range. Um, but for other things, it is already quite uh, low resolution. Um, volume, I think, is also fine, but other things might be suffering from this low value range sometimes. So um, that's one of the shortcomings of MIDI, definitely. But more on that maybe later. And then the other uh, uh, type of messages, um, is system messages and they are used for all sorts of things like uh, I don't know selecting instruments um, all sorts of weird stuff <laughs> um, they're also um, they can also be defined by applications and by devices um, manufacturers device manufacturers and um, but one one really uh, maybe for now worth mentioning um, one message that's really worth mentioning is the MIDI beat clock um, that is actually uh, just a simple pulse, just a single message that is sent 24 times per quarter note. So um, abbreviated as PPQN, pulses per quarter note. And this is used to synchronize different applications or devices with other devices and so on. So the, um, the MIDI beat clock is, is, quite, um, is quite helpful if you have more than one thing, um, if you want to play more than one machine, thing, application, etc. OSC is, uh, is supposed to be a successor to uh, MIDI. It um, was, was conceived like that. Uh, however, um, in contrast to MIDI, it is really just a communication protocol and it's, um, and it's based on, uh, on Ethernet networks, um, usually on UDP, um, but can also be used under TCP. So, um, so it really is, is the, the concept of, of OSC, of Open Sound Control, is connected to networks, uh, wireless or um, wired networks. Um, there are cases where it's implemented on other hardware, but um, most of the times it is really about um, Ethernet networks, um, which makes it very ubiquitous and it's, it's also really interesting to, to have like wireless connections like that. Um, and there are sometimes issues with latency, of course, and um, and other things that you experience in network, in networks, in network infrastructures. But um, but apart from this, it is um, it is yeah, in a way, uh, um, an improvement or, or you know has a wider spectrum than the usually cable-based MIDI. Um, it's also made, of course, for sending and receiving messages. Um, the, the messages that are sent around in OSC are quite um, convoluted in a way. They are meant to be rather human readable. Um, they don't um, care so much also about like, you know, 
efficiency, data efficiency, bandwidth, etc. MIDI is quite bandwidth efficient, but OSC is a bit more, uh, you know, doesn't care so much about it because it kind of assumes that it's running on really fast machines and the frequency of messages sent is, is not exceeding the, the performance capabilities of the machines that it's running on. So, um, so there's a bit more of a focus on human readable um, messages. So um, the, the, the general, the, the anatomy, the very basic anatomy of a OSC message is it always has an address pattern, which very much resembles like these, this, um, the, the, the way that uh, folder structures are described also on a computer. So it's, so it's often like, um, you know, node on slash um, music instrument one slash something slash something. Um, so, so they're, um, they're comprised of, of uh, descriptors separated by slashes. Um, although this is really just a, an, an idea, it doesn't have to be like this, but that's kind of the OSC um, intention to have the slash idiom to, um, to create these hierarchical, struct hierarchical structures like, like it's also done on a, on a computer with files and folders. And then the second thing is um, the type tag and the type tag is actually the payload of the message that is usually the the numbers that are changing mm, and that are kind of variable so um so like a like a very common message in a music context would be um a note on the address pattern would be slash note on and then the type tag would be two integers um here in this example it's 48 and 100 that would define the um describe the um, the pitch the, um, and the, um, the velocity of a note, for example. Um, so the address pattern would be slash node on and then type tag two integers, 48, 100. Um, there is uh, a very famous processing library for this. It's called OSC P5, maintained by Andreas Schlegel, good old friend of mine. Um, and this is the only library you ever need to use if you are in the processing library and the processing environment. So, um, so don't even look for other libraries. This one is really well done. It works super nice. It's been used in so many um, occasions and instances, installations, etc. So um, that's my only um, advice um, for library, for the processing environment. Um, if you are in other environments, uh, other programming environments, um, that might also, um, you might also want to use OSC and there's for sure there's something um, in Open Frameworks and Cinder, for example, as well. And um, yeah, fun fact, uh, the Super Collider application, this, this one very um, famous yeah, music programming um, application is, uh, is internally is also communicating with OSC. So um, it also has like different modules and the messages between the modules, they are also sent internally with OSC. So, um, despite what I was saying earlier, that OSC is actually designed around um, yeah, network infrastructure, um, you can also send you know, network messages to yourself, um, to localhost or to 127.0.0.1 IP. Um, and that is actually used by some applications, in this case Super Collider, to communicate also internally. Um, that has some interesting benefits and some interesting options. So, um, DSP with virtual audio driver, um, as I said earlier, there's also this, this, this um, method of rerouting sound output internally with, a virtual, with the idea of virtual sound cards. Um, this basically means that you install a, a driver that doesn't connect to a physical sound card or device, but it creates a virtual sound card, sound device, um, on your machine and you can send um, audio data to it as if it was like, a, I don't know, a set of speakers. But instead of, um, you know, then hearing um, those signals or those audio streams, you can use them in, um, you can grab them from the output of that virtual sound card and process them and use them in your own application again. Um, this is, yeah, it's always a bit confusing to do this. It is always a little bit shaky to do it. Um, it is um, usually breaks with every system update, so this should always be done with a with a little bit of caution. 
um, and well tested on, on, on the very specific setup that you're interested in. Um, there, there have been a lot of those um, virtual sound cards um, and they have come and gone. Um, but currently the, um, this, this open source project uh, Black Hole is quite the thing on, um, on Mac OS to use. Um, there are also commercial products, um, actually one I'm using at the moment, it's called Loopback, um, which is, has more features um, but costs money. Um, so um, for Windows, I don't know. Would be, I would be interested to hear what the, what the current virtual sound card um, suggestion is on a Windows system. Um, on Linux, it is Jack Audio, from what I heard. Um, um, Jack Audio is apparently a good option in this context. Um, by the way, never mentioned this, but I do all these things on a Mac. Um, and uh, some of the examples that I show and some of the techniques I show really only work on a Mac. But often they also work on other machines, but just as an inline disclaimer. So interfacing application. Um, the first thing I want, to, I want to show is how to um, interface um, with... Um, actually, it's not the first thing, but <laughs> what I want to show is uh, um, how to interface with um, DAWs, digital audio workstations. Um, today I'm going to use GarageBand, but um, Logic Pro and Ableton Live are probably also interesting um, and absolutely feasible DAWs to interface with um, and it can be achieved via MIDI and OSC as well. And I uh, want, also want to, well, I want to interface them through the processing um, yeah, environment um, by the help of this tone library that I'm using throughout this entire workshop. Um, I've mentioned this in the, in the first chapter already, so, so this is a library um, that's on GitHub that I'm developing as a, as a, as a kind of a tool set and a, um, a helper to um, facilitate this, this uh, notion of um, algorithmic composition and programming audio. It's supposed to be a very low level uh, in terms of should, supposed to be like very easy to access, um, easy to get going, but also allowing some more yeah, crazy weird stuff to, to um, so um, yeah, so first stop is um, using the tone library to um, interface with, um, to, to receive and also send uh, MIDI messages. Again, as I said, I, I'm on a Mac system, so um, the first thing you probably need to do is to set up the virtual or internal MIDI routing so that actually your processing slash Java environment is able to receive um, and send messages. So similar to this virtual sound card, you also need like a virtual MIDI device. Uh, on Mac OS, this is done by, um, by a system application, which is called um, Audio MIDI Setup, which by the way is also, um, is also used to uh, configure your audio devices. Not just, your media, not just your media devices, but also your audio devices. Um, so if you don't get this window when you start the application, um, then you would need to go to um, show MIDI Studio. Um, by the way, it, it lives in a weird place, slash system, slash applications, slash utilities. Um, that's where it lives. So um, you might need to do a little bit of clicking. Um, apparently, Again, I haven't tested this, but this was a, a hint I got from somebody. Um, Loop MIDI is the a similar application on Windows. I don't know what a similar application on Linux would be, um, but I'm also I'd be very interested also to learn about this. So, if you're on a Mac, you would open um, audio, audio MIDI setup, and here um, you find this one, depending on your your setup, but usually you find this one IAC um, inter application communication. Um, box and if you double click on the box it opens the its properties and here you can actually change the name of, of that device I'll leave it at with the default and probably in your case you don't have this uh, here it's probably going to be empty so you can just click the the, um, the plus button and then it crashes interesting um, and then you get like a um, 
you, it generates a MIDI port, a MIDI device for you, basically. Let's see if it crashes again. No, this time it doesn't crash. So, um, but then also make sure that the device is enabled, is online. And um, you can also configure different things here, but for now, um, I think this should, this should do. Okay, I'm a little freaked out by the fact that it crashed when I added a second buzz, but um, I hope it's, it's still gonna work fine. It's gonna be fine. Um, yeah, so once this is done, um, you can actually, you should try to see if, if this device is working and was created. Um, there are multiple ways to do this. Um, I'll show you um, how to do it in, in processing, but um, you can also um, use other applications that are kind of dedicated for, for showing MIDI devices and also MIDI messages. So. Um, so I have this one application. Actually, I no, don't know anything about this application. I just got it from the App Store. It's called MIDI View, but I found it to be quite handy. It lists all your available MIDI devices. At the moment, it's just this one IAC driver. Um, and it will display every MIDI message that's, that's been sent to this driver and that's um, received by this driver. So um, yeah, I suggest to, um, to maybe also get it. Um, if you don't want to get it, then um, you can also um, just use the processing library to um, the, the processing environment and the tone library to do this. And um, I'm just going to show you really quick how to do it. So there's one method that comes with the with the um, with the library. So I'm just going to um, import it really quickly. I don't need all of this. So you just import the library here with this command and then you just go tone punct dump midi input devices so this is a, a static I don't want to save it this is a static um, um, method so you can just call it from from the um, object here and if you if you run it then you get like an output in the, in the terminal here and it shows you all the MIDI input devices. So these, these are the devices that you, um, that you, uh, that you can um, listen to. Um, likewise, there's also another method um, that you can call, which is quite similar. It's called um, dump MIDI output devices. And if you run that one, then you get also a dump of devices in the um, output in the in the terminal. And um, here you see some weird devices. I have no idea what they are, but you can. I definitely see this bus one here. That's the one that was the one in the IAC window that I've created just a minute ago. Again, like no idea what this one is. Here, by the way, you see the MIDI view. I don't know why it's actually an independent device, but um, it's there. So, um, so this is one one way to um, to see. If the if you now have a virtual internal MIDI uh, going, but uh, again MIDI view also helps here, so that should that should do just fine. Um, the first thing I want to do now is to um, look at um, an example here. This one, which is here now, um, this is a, this is a, one of the five simple examples of the tone library. Um, and again, here it uh, it shows the it dumps the, the MIDI devices here. There's still an output from a prior execution of the application. Uh, let me just kill it again. So here, when I run it, I see the, um, the these things here. Um, then it just, uh, when I press the mouse, it, um, it creates a tone on event. And when I release the mouse, it creates a tone off event. And one thing that is, um, that might, might be worth noting here also is that it's also described a little bit um, longer here in the, in the comments but um, if you want to have a MIDI device um, 
or could talk to a media device, want to send info to a media device, you need to first say that you want to use MIDI now, yeah, instead of the internal synthesizer. And then you need to also give the name of the, the bus um, exactly like it's written here in the output. So the space needs to be um, the same in the same places. The spaces need to be in the same places, but also um, I think it's also character sensitive. So, um, so I, you basically best thing is to do just copy it from down here to up here and then, uh, and then you should find the device. So if you then start, um, it shouldn't give you any, any like warnings or nothing. Um, so now I'm, um, I'm ready to, to send MIDI, um, um, MIDI messages here to whoever is listening <laughs> to it. Um, so um, just hang on a second. And this is basically all you um, need to do first now to, to be able to communicate um, with other media applications. And for this example, I want to, um, I just want to use a DAW, um, oh God, um, GarageBand in this case. Um, it doesn't fit my small screen here, but, um, but I think it should do. Um, so I, um, I opened GarageBand and just created a, um, an empty track with a, I selected an electric piano. So when I now um, start my MIDI application, oh, maybe and, and maybe I should also check if everything is set up properly. So here in the preferences, make sure that you have, um, oh, it changed a bit. Um, looks a bit different than it used to. Anyway, um, so. Um, make sure there's some media devices detected um, and then let's just give it a try. Since there's no other media devices in the system, um, it should also be, um, be doing fine. And I hope that you can actually hear them now because I'm uh, rerouting my audio to um, be able to record it. So let's give this a try. Again, it's always a little bit exciting to, <laughs> to see if this works. Okay, so I'm connected now. Um, I selected this track here with the electric piano. When I press the mouse, I create a note on event. Ah, and you can tell. And this is so nice because now you have really have this, this kind of uh, option of, of uh, using the, the kind of the wide range of available instruments um, from, from like um, these, these, um, Let's see if there's something I don't know. I haven't tested this yet, but, but from these um, from these other you know music applications. So I don't. Know. So this now I just chose a different instrument in GarageBand, and I keep on creating the same events in in my um, in my application. But now I get like a very different different sound. So this this can be very handy to um, to yeah if you want to achieve like really well sounding systems really quickly. And one other thing that might also be interesting, especially also for debugging. Um, so here, yeah, I told you about this MIDI view application that I was um, using here. And, and again, like it's also set to the same driver and, um, and it should now display the MIDI events that I create that are also sent to and listened to by GarageBand. Okay. So let me close all this. So this is uh, this this is one way to um, to connect the um, like your program to other sound generating music making applications. By the way, you can also record the things in MIDI in in, in GarageBand, for example, if once you're connected to the um, to the application like this. Mm, maybe one. One word of, uh, not warning, but one note basically is that um, um, I, ta I talked about this channel concept in MIDI. Um, that's also available in the tone library, but it's called instrument here. Um, 
but it also is a bit problematic, especially in uh, GarageBand, where uh, GarageBand only allows for one single channel to be interpreted. Um, you need to pay for more expensive software to achieve multi-channel uh, MIDI. Um, so, and then, and then now the other thing um, that I want to show is uh, the the opposite direction in a way. So um, you can do um, um, with the same a similar setup. Also with the library, you can um, connect external MIDI devices um, to your um, to your. Um, damn, it always opens in the wrong screen. Where is it here? So now you can also um, connect like external MIDI um, devices um, for input now. So um, in that one sketch earlier, I was sending MIDI messages to GarageBand, and now I want to try to connect um, here again my my MIDI keyboard. Um, here, this MIDI keyboard, Atuya. Um, um, to, to a processing sketch so that I can actually trigger events from the outside. So what I, um, what I want to do now is the first thing I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to list dump all the input devices again to the terminal here and um, Oh, it's nice. Also good to have uh, errors in, in a demonstration. So um, here it says like error, error MIDI in, couldn't find Arturio key step 37. And that is because it wasn't turned on. Uh, yeah. So now I turn it on. Um, I run it again. And um, now it shows up here. Um, again, like you would need to uh, like copy the name exactly as it's written down here um, to up here. So this time um, I'm not going to um, start the tone library like I did earlier. But this time I'm, I'm going to start the event receive MIDI. Uh, method and um, and um, this this starts a, 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 um, um, yeah, a routine that will then um, listen on the MIDI port where uh, for this for this uh, device which by the way also now shows up in the MIDI view here um, so um, and then again like through with a string, I um, to specify which device I want to connect to. And then whenever um, this device sends a, um, an event to the computer um, or to this program also, then, um, then this method is called here. And then I get, um, I get like all the um, yeah, numbers and, and um, that are the payload of this event. So, um, so when I run this now, Yeah, it connects properly, so when I now press the keys. It's actually also quite interesting what I was saying earlier when I press, like, it has, it's, it's, uh, it's got a touch response, so when I, when I press softly, it just plays a, lot, a quiet note, and when I press really hard, so, so this is one of the features, for example, of a, of a, well, normal MIDI keyboard to also be able to detect the, amount of pressure exerted on the on the key so um, this is this is a way to um, to um, connect external um, devices so the next thing um, is um, so the next is it's a change in topic a little bit um, that's the um, but I also want to show it and demonstrate it and that is the um, MIDI clock I was um, briefly introducing it earlier, and that is actually um, designed to uh, synchronize um, different um, applications. So, need to stop a few sketches here, um, and this is this is also uh, something implemented in the uh, tone library. Um, and you can find an example of, of how to use it then. And, and um, this sketch that I need to drag here. So this one 
it's called um, event MIDI clock. And here, um, similar to the, the beat object that you also find in the very basic examples where the, a beat is generated internally, um, you can also do um, the same thing with, um, with yeah, a beat generated through MIDI. So, um, so similar to um, an, um, like, a, like a keyboard, like an external MIDI device that would create notes, um, you also need to, to specify the device that is supposed to um, deliver the um, MIDI, MIDI clock. And, um, and for that, again, like I also need to, uh, because now this application is supposed to listen to um, an, an incoming clock signal, this also, um, it's an input, media input device. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I, I'm gonna dump the input devices again, and there I see, okay, there's multiple ones, my keyboard that is still connected, but also um, the, the, the internal um, MIDI virtual device. And um, I wanna use this one first because the first um, demo I want to do is um, I want to show um, how to how to use this this like very basic um, very rudimentary like command line tool that um, that I've been um, that I that I created um, out of an example for for like a C um, C C plus um, plus MIDI library um, which is really handy because you can just um, you can just Start it on the command line and then just select the device you want to use. Um, I want to use the IAC driver, and now it starts creating this um, this MIDI clock, um, starts and stops. It is really more like for debugging and for demonstration purposes. Now I probably wouldn't like um, use this in a in a performance context or anything. So now now I have a MIDI clock running internally. It sends to to the IAC driver bus one, and when I now start my application. Um, It creates this, I oh see, this is actually really just very debuggish. It just runs for a specific period of time, but you could see how it, how it actually stopped. Um, and, uh, and now it listens to the, uh, the, to the pulses from that um, command line application. And whenever there's enough pulses collected, remember it's 24 pulses per quarter note, and then the speed, um, Oh, actually, that's wrong. Um, I was, it's actually for every pulse, the speed method is called. So it's actually qu called quite a lot. So 24 times per quarter note, half a second per quarter note, and then 120 beats per minute is approximately. So it's like 2,000 something something, 3,000 almost um, pulses per minute um, that the clock is listening to. Anyway, um, so um, but but this is the the message where or this is the method where the messages from the MIDI clock actually arrive. So again, like now, this is actually also good to see now here, the application has now stopped playing notes because the MIDI clock signal has disappeared from the, from the system. So when I start it again, um, it starts playing again. So let me just stop this. And, um, but likewise, you can also have um, other devices. So, um, so for example, this Arturio keyboard, it's actually not just a keyboard, it can do many more things. Um, it can also, um, yeah, it also has an arpeggiator and a sequencer built in and um, that you can, you know, like use for live performances, etc. So, for example, if you would now want to write a program that would be, um, you know, synchronized with the Arturio, um, yeah, internal workings, uh, then you would, you could, could also use Arturio as, a, as an input device. So, um, so yeah, now it's connected to the to the um, Arturio, and it's and now the application is listening to the to the beat clock generated by the Arturio. Right now it's not running, but when I press play, you can see it's actually running. Now it's at 120 beats per minute, and um, yeah, that's it for now. So um, so I can use my external device to um, to um, Control the 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 um, the my, my the application. Good. Okay. So you've seen how to use the command line and how to use an external um, um, device to do this. Um, but you could also use. Um, 
So you could also use um, um, uh, another application to generate that MIDI clock. So for example, here is um, Logic Pro. Um, and uh, an old version we're using here um, and um, so if you want to if you want to um, have Logic Pro create the, um, the, the the beat for the um, for the um, the MIDI clock basically then you can uh, actually let's let me just just for the sake of the demonstration um, let me just create an like a like a like an object here, um, and uh, when I play it now, it's, it plays at 120 beats per minute. Um, can, of course, I can also change it. Um, and when we want to have this application talk to our application, then we need to use this internal MIDI device again. So um, we're going to change this back to Buzz One, and I'm just going to start the application here. And once it receives the MIDI um, clock signal, it would go like boop, 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 again, like it, like it did earlier. So um, we run this now. So it doesn't receive a MIDI um, beat signal at the moment. So when I press play, it still doesn't receive it um, because um, Logic is not um, configured to, to send out a MIDI signal. And that's something that we need to configure first in the preferences here under, so under MIDI there's, um, this, this one tab is called Sync, uh, and then it's, I don't know, it's well hidden. Uh, here in the MIDI Sync Project Settings, you get like another preference panel, and, and there you can, you see there's the MIDI clock. And here you can actually define destinations, apparently multiple, um, we just need one. So here we select the, the IAC driver again, so now the, um, the, um, the signals are sent to the virtual MIDI device again. Um, by the way, there's, there's also like a mode option um, and I'm not going to get too deep into this, but this MIDI clock uh, implementation in the tone library is actually also aware of, um, of these kind of these events that are song start and song stop events. Um, so when you, when you rewind or, or um, um, stop um, um, like a like a song played in in Logic, for example, um, the MIDI library can also detect this. The tone library can also detect this stop and start. So, um, which it can be handy, you know, so that everything starts at the same point. Basically, can start at the same point. So here's our um, sketch waiting to for a signal, and when I now press it, I can. I can see it reacts to, to the um, clock signal that's now generated by um, logic. And You hear it's synchronized, um, but you might have also heard that it's um, a slightly little bit off, and that is due to my programming. You know, because I'm passing these 24 pulses per quarter note, I'm passing them in a way that is, it's, it's. I think it's just a slightly little bit off, um, but that's something you can adjust with an with an offset parameter in your application or in um, in Logic, I think even. Okay, so so this is this is how you can actually use the the MIDI clock with a with a, uh, the command line interface tool or logic pro or even like an external device um, yeah so um, we looked at this um, um, at receiving like uh, midi clock events already but um, but you can also of course receive other events um, all sorts of other events actually from from other applications so um, so um, this might be um, worth showing also is that you can actually set up your application to um, listen to let me just show you this in, in code to you can set it up so that it can actually listen to um, to different well 
input sources basically so um, it can you can listen to MIDI like we did already with the with the um, um, earlier already but you can also uh, listen to OSC messages um, so um, in this sketch both um, ports both ears are activated so there's the um, OSC receiver and then the MIDI receiver and again I, uh, maybe just as a little hint there's um, I'm not gonna go into de too deep into this now, but um, um, OSC is actually, as I said, like a network protocol, and you can, if you use it in this default mode without any parameters, um, except a reference to the sketch, but without any additional parameters, then it will just send and listen to messages, uh, well, actually send messages um, to itself, to the local host, but you can also um, supply like additional parameters and then actually send also um, I'm sorry, not with this object, but essentially you can also send messages to other um, machines also on on, an, on the network. Okay, so we uh, we have this uh, event receiver sketch here. So it waits um, and listens to OSC and MIDI events, and whenever it receives an event, actually it doesn't play anything. It will just print it to the to the terminal down here. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, I'm going to run it like this. Sorry, have to move this out of the way. And um, so the first thing I'm gonna do is actually I'm gonna um, create like a second processing sketch, um, which which um, to which the source code is actually at the very end of this um, of this uh, these slides here. Um, And I need to cycle through 1,000 windows to, um, I'm just going to copy and paste it really quickly because it saves some time. Um, this, is, this, uh, this is just a, I would say, like a very, um, yeah, rudimentary basic uh, um, OSC sketch, which is actually taken from the OSC library, OSC P5. Um, and what it does, it, it sends uh, on to a specific IP address, which but in this case is, is itself localhost, uh, on a specific port. Um, it sends, when I press the mouse, it sends this node on event, you know, remember from the introduction, uh, and then adds two values to it, 48 and 100, that's the type tag, address pattern, type tag, remember? And, uh, and it sends these messages to, to, um, to, its own, the, to this machine, it. Um, it's a little bit confusing here, but um, so where's my other window? <laughs> Damn it, I'm just gonna restart these, otherwise I will never find them again. So I'm, I'm gonna start my listener here. It's, it's now waiting for messages. And then I'm gonna start this little application, which is just sending this note on event. And when I now press the mouse, here you see on the, on the screen that uh, it receives an event of type zero, which um, in our library is a node on event and, um, and has a payload of two values, a type tag um, 48 and 100. So, um, so this is like inter-communication, uh, inter-application communication with OSC. That's very simple. But um, since we just, uh, Add it here. Maybe just bring. Damn it. Maybe just bring back um, Garage. No, Logic Pro. Sorry. It's a little bit doesn't like the low resolution here. But um, but here, you know, I just uh, on the while I was talking, I was creating this little series of notes. Um, but since we are also listening for MIDI events on Buzz One, um, I can also um, just play. Mm play here and then I'm also receiving all these messages from from um, from Logic Pro. Um, I'm just gonna close this. Here there was just some song stop I think. Um, so um, so it can actually receive like MIDI messages and OC messages like um, like it would um, like interchangeably in a way. Um, but then there's also something else which I'm I just hope it's 
it works now. Um, and this is, uh, this is for example, like this, um, this one iPhone application called Touch OSC, um, which allows you to, co to create like uh, configurable um, interfaces. And, um, and I now configured it that it will send OSC messages to this machine, my, my laptop, um, on that one port that the laptop is listening. It's the default port at the moment, which is 7001. Um, and um, this is also really handy because now I can have I can build interfaces in on my iPhone and then I can like sliders and I can you know I can use them trigger them and send them messages to to my um, application as you can see here when I use the slider there's a lot of messages pouring in so um, so this is also like an uh, might also be like a handy way to um, yeah well like an interesting thing to, to connect to uh, another device, really, like another device on the network. Okay, and then, of course, um, but for that, I would need to, um, need to change the MIDI receiver. Um, yeah, um, but I think that's something I've demonstrated already. But so when I now started this with the Arturio and listening to the Arturio events, then um, when I, when I press when I press a key, I get like the the note on events from um, from the keyboard now, right? So um, I can also connect other devices through MIDI again. Okay, good. That worked kind of <laughs> kind of okay. So and now for the uh, for the uh, most f shaky flaky uh, kind of um, inter application connection that's this this um, internal rerouting and um, I also have there's also like an like a demonstration of, of how this should work and um, in a in a test run um, for this for this uh, yeah demonstration here um, I already found out that my setup that I'm using right now to record sounds uh, from my computer from the microphone and so on to record all of this uh, this in, in the video that you're listening to at the moment um the the setup i'm using actually corrupts the the sound a little bit you can still hear that um inter application well rerouting actually of sounds but it's um it sounds a little bit crappy but um, um at least on my other machine, it works when I don't have this um, this complicated like recording setup enabled. But um, so that's definitely a bug that needs to be investigated. So, um, so I'm closing this and close the wrong window again. So here, um, this is the example that uh, illustrates how to do this. Um, now I'm um, I'm not looking for MIDI devices or OSC um, you know connections, but now I'm looking actually to um, use the the, um, the 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 actual audio processing devices on the system. So when I run when I run the sketch now, uh, the first thing I'm I'm doing is I dump all the available audio devices, and this is where it becomes like very specific, very interesting, and also very shaky again. Um, here I um, told you before about this virtual sound card that you can install on a Mac. It's called Black Hole, and in, in this example, I'm actually using this as a as a kind of a, um, as, a as a device that I um, that I want to use to um, to to send my you know my normal notes that I would generate with my internal synthesizer. I want to um, I want to send them to um, to that virtual sound card, and then I'll have uh, um, this DSP. Um, kernel running which then in this uh, example produces a very simple delay um, or uses a very simple delay algorithm to to feed an old signal back into the current signal um, and um, and so so I receive the tones and notes played from my internal synthesizer and then I apply the delay to it um, in order to achieve this I need to um, I need to start my my synth with um, this virtual sound card, and um, I need to um, specify this by a number, and the number you can find here in this dump of available audio devices. And here um, it is called Black Hole Channel 2. There's also another Black Hole instance with 16 channels, but the two 
channel version is, is good for now. So that's ID number two. So, so um, I'm writing a two in here, right? So this is a two. And then uh, when I start the DSP, um, I need to specify the, um, the, um, the device I want to, you know, like send the digital audio to. And in, in our case, or in my case now, this is um, loopback, which is the recording setup I'm using. And I want to receive the data from black hole. So the data I'm sending into black hole with a, from my synthesizer, I want to receive now in my DSP. Um, so that when, when this audio block is repeatedly called, as you remember maybe, um, and which will also be explained in a bit more detail in a, in a later chapter, um, I receive the, my synthesizer samples and I will write them to, to this array here. So when I run this now, and again, it sounds crappy, I know, but there's some weird cutoffs. Uh, when I now play a note, you can even see in the oscilloscope where it's cut off. Also, my microphone is also recorded. Maybe that's partly the reason why it's... Um, but you can see that the signal arrives here and I can, I can pre uh, reprocess or, yeah, apply effects to it. Okay, that was not such a superb demonstration, but it basically um, is meant to illustrate the concept and not, not the hi-fi quality of it, because that's, that wasn't available there. Uh, and maybe lastly, there's, uh, there's also one other kind of interface I really I find very interesting at times. Um, it is not so much like a runs on a yeah it doesn't run so well on a on a on this kind of audio high performance um, speed, but it is definitely something to um, to look into, um, and that is actually the uh, the command line interface. And with the command line interface, yeah, this 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 terminal here. Um, Let me just see what's, what's going on here. Um, so here I have the command line and, and there are some, actually quite, quite a lot of um, interesting tools also available there. And there's one, uh, one tool, at least on, um, on, on Mac OS, and I think there are also similar ones on Linux and probably also on, um, on, on, on Windows. So, so this is one command line tool which is, uh, yeah, like a little application, it's called um, Say, and it can just speak Hello words. World. Hello world, I am. <laughs> and so on, it's got this very iconic and funny um, voice. And, um, and this, is, this is something I found also, yeah, cool because you can also, um, yeah, use that in, in your own project. Um, and so I made it available in this tone library where um, with this, in this example, um, and what, it, what, this, what this sketch basically does, it's, it prepares, slightly prepares um, the, damn it's, it's a wrong sketch again. It's always on the wrong window, sorry. Um, what it basically does, it, it makes use of this uh, application and creates a connection f uh, to the, um, to the, to this uh, through the command line interface to that that say application so so it allows me to uh, programmatically trigger words um, from the um, from my application here so when I run it now I know not by what how I am made bold nor how it may concern my modesty in such a in sync to the beat it um, which is triggered by the beat object here. Um, it, it just reads all the words one by one, and you can even do things like select different, different uh, voices and stuff. And again, like this is in a way, it's quite simple, but it's. Um, I know not by what power I am made bold, nor how it may concern my modesty. This Daniel is just my favorite, favorite voice, um, and and so you can also like incorporate this into into I don't know your program. Um, this this kind of voice synthesis, this built-in voice synthesis, and whatever voice you install in your system, you can actually use from 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 within this speech thing. Okay, so that's actually it. Um, kind of concludes the 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 really kind of wild and interesting and and 
uh, chaotic and uh, you know vast way of of connecting applications to each other um, and devices. Um, that there's again like the, the MIDI and OSC are just and command line interface are really just three examples, but um, but you can do a lot with those and. Um, you know, none of those uh, interfaces, for example, is very good for sending like huge amounts of data. For example, like real, um, like like real sample level uh, audio streams. You know, with with forty four thousand uh, samples per per second, stuff like this. It's not really meant to to, to work like this. It's more like communication, um, sending events and and parameter values um, back and forth. But still, it's there's quite a lot to be achieved. Um, you can quite achieve quite a lot with just those, um, yeah, more high-level um, connections. And again, like really trying to explore also, you know, what's possible with a DAW if you don't just click the buttons and, and compose the notes by hand, but really have an application do this um, can be quite interesting, really. And these were all like real-time um, um, connections. Ob obviously, there's also other ways to, to uh, like in an offline way, um, for example, generate um, MIDI files from your application and then play them back at a later time. Things like these are also possible, but not um, within the scope of this um, this one chapter here. Okay, I hope you liked it. Um, let me know if something was missing or if something was wrong or if you have some additions to make. See you in the next chapter.